What's going on guys? Today I'm bringing you a video a bunch of you have been asking for. That's seeing how good a Spit and Chicklets All-Star team would be if they all played together in the NHL. So for this, I'm substituting out the Ottawa Senators as they're tied with LA as the lowest rate team in the NHL. And I feel like the Spit and Chicklets team should definitely be in the Atlantic Division. They're based in Boston. You can see there, I have them as, you know, the Boston Spit and Chicklets. Did my best there on the logo. Of course, I went with the Pink Whitney theme, of course, the classic black and yellow. Top players there, Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon, Austin Matthews. I want to show you guys the lines I'll go through and say, you know, why I select every player. But basically, I'm looking at, you know, favorite guests, recurring guests, uh, just players that they really like that they had on the show. So I think you guys should like all my picks. Um, Chicklet Serena, of course, again, black and pink. We're going the Pink Whitney theme. Team overall isn't crazy. They're 87 overall. So they're tied with the Florida Panthers. Uh, lower rated than Boston Bruins, Montreal Canadiens, Tampa Bay, Toronto, even with some all-stars on their team. But I still like the makeup of this team for the most part. I feel like we should be a playoff team. Let's find out. All right, guys, so I just finished adding the lines. I think you'll like them a lot. Already sent a few preseason games. Terry Roenick, their leading scorer. Again, we go over every single player in a minute here. So team status is buyer, which is equivalent to champion. We're only 87 overall, though, so maybe, you know, the game likes what they see from us. Here is the Spin Chicklets All-Star team. So first line... Matthews, Crosby, McKinnon, of course, Spin Chicklets guys love Crosby and McKinnon. Uh, they're the first two in the Sandbagger Classic. Matthews, of course, good buddy of Biz. He's been on a couple times. I really like him. Now, uh, the second line here, guys, I had to honor Jimmy Hayes, having him on this team. He's been on the Spin Chicklets podcast a few times. Of course, going to have him play on the same line as his brother. And in between them there, they have a legend in Jeremy Roenick. I'm pretty sure that his episode, I know at, at least at one point, was the most downloaded Spin Chicklets episode ever. If you guys don't remember, that's the episode where we talked about playing a prank on a couple Sharks players in Tori Mitchell. And I think Devin Setaguchi, an all time episode for sure. And again, I wanted to honor Jimmy Hayes with this team. And on the third line, we actually have one of his co stars on the Missing Curfew podcast, and Scotty Upshaw, who's also a repeat guest of the Spin Chicklets podcast, playing with Shane Dome there, who Bissonette's a huge fan of. I think, you know, really looked up to him, friend of the show. And then, of course, Paul Bissonette there. Um, 75 overall, not the lowest rated forward on the team, though, surprisingly. That goes to uh, Ryan Pugsy Malone, 74 overall. Obviously, had to get both Malone and Teddy Purcell on this team. I think those two guys behind probably Hayes and Yandel are two of the favorite guests. And in between them, they're actually playing center is Ryan Reeves, good friend of Bisa Nets. I think he's been on the show a couple times. Um, somehow he's got 70 face-offs, so he's playing in the middle there between Malone and Purcell. Uh, you'll notice Malone and Purcell are actually made up. Um, I used their ratings for the most recent game they were in. I think for all the creative players, I was able to get their stats from NHL 19. The only one I had to go back further for was actually Teddy Purcell had to go to NHL 18. So again, um, Upshaw and Hayes also created. Now defensively here, pretty interesting and it kind of turned out well. So Ekman Larson, again, big fan of his nasties, you know, playing in Arizona. Of course, I already mentioned him, Keith Yandel, how can we not have him that top pair? Probably, you know, an all-time guest on Spin Chicka's show. Now in our second D pair, of course, we had to have Ryan Whitney, who's actually 82 overall, which isn't too bad. It actually worked out really well as both him and Beast and were already in the game, so this is just what their alumni rating is. And I actually have Whitney paired up with Shane O'Brien, another member of that Missing Curfew podcast. Only 72 overall there. Uh, lowest rated player on the team, I think, but him and Whitney get a plus five. So Whitney's gonna be playing like an 87, just gonna be zipping that puck around the ice, making some sick passes to Sid, hopefully, and O'Brien even, as their lowest rated player, now 77, no longer lowest rated. So works out really well. Third pair there, Tyson Berry, good friend of uh, Beast and Nets. I think he's only been on the podcast one time, and I'm pretty sure him and Beast and Nets are like best of friends. And then Commodore there, he's been on the podcast like three times, I think. Pretty funny guess. So. I uh, and Barry Bond pair get a plus one. Again, I tried to put as much thought as I could into building this team, trying to get you know their favorite players, recurring guests. Uh, when you think it's been chicklets, like some of the guests that come to mind. Crosby and McKinnon, of course, were part of the first ever Sandbaggers Invitational. I think Hayes and Yandel were part of the second one. In terms of goalies, though, goalies was tough to choose. So I decided to go with Mark Andre Fleury, as both Wit and Beeson have played with him. Uh, he's on the show. He was a good guest. And then backing him up, Lunkfist, who's technically never actually been on an episode of the show, but they did interview him for the All Star game, and they had like a video on their YouTube channel. And it was one of my favorite interviews ever. You guys gotta check it out. Uh, the helicopter story was amazing. We found out that Ryan Whitney scored his first ever game on Lunkfist, which I thought was pretty cool, helping him get his spot on this team. And I think you guys all know just about Lunkfist being the man rocket when he talks about uh, different parts of his body all the time. So uh, he deserved a spot on this team as the backup. And again, Flurry. Played with both hosts and Bisa and Whitney. I feel like he made a lot of sense there. Now, in terms of special teams, uh, the first unit gets a plus five. It's the three all stars of this team in McKinnon, Crosby, and Matthews. And then we got Whitney and Yandel there. Two offensive defensemen, just great playmaking defensemen. He passes it up to those three forwards and hopefully score some goals. I mean, a plus five 
Cinnamon Cannon are basically, you know, perfect players at 98. Matthew's pretty close, 97. Matthew's shot is going to be like 101 Richard accuracy. Should be fun to see how they do. Um, second power play unit there, Hayes, Ronick, Doan, Barry, Ekman, Larson gets a plus one. It's not too bad. But the first four-man power play consists of two different Sam Baker pairings in Crosby, Kinnan, and Hayes and Yandel. I thought that was pretty cool. They get a plus one as well. Second one there, Ronick, Matthews, Whitney, and Doan. I tried to get Whitney in as much as I could. Bisonette, though, being 75 was a little bit tough. PK here, we actually have the Hayes brothers paired up with Whitney and Yandel. Somehow, Yandel and Whitney, both offensive defensemen, work on the PK. Had to have the Hayes brothers again on a special team. McKinnon, Roenick, Barry Ekman, Larson is the second PK. And then finally, the three-man PK. Unfortunately, it's two minus ones, but honestly, not too bad. The three men's always tough to get, and uh, I'll just take it, honestly. So right there, guys, they look at this Spin Chicklets team. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, hopefully, you know, we can win this cup here for Jimmy. And I'm going to show you guys the captaincy for this team. I think it's probably obvious what I'm going to do. But Whitney there, of course, wearing the C. He was on Spindle Chicklets show before Bisonette. Bisonette has one of the A's, and then we had to give the second A to Jimmy Hayes. Kind of doing this video for him. I'll show you guys the jerseys here, as well as the team ratings. Matching up the two Boston teams. Boston Spin Chicklets against the Boston Bruins. So, right there's the home jersey. You guys can see McKinnon wearing it. Again, pink Whitney theme, so it's black and pink there. I feel like not too much pink. I feel like a reasonable amount. The logo turned out really well, I think, too. About the closest you could do to a Spin Chicklets logo in NHL 21. The away there, just the white and pink. And then the home, or sorry, the alternate, is just the old Spin Chicklets logo there, the black and yellow. In terms of the ratings here, we have 88 offense, 86 defense, and 90 goaltending. Surprise, actually, our goaltending is our highest rated stat, but we do have two legends in net. So we'll start with the sim here, guys. I almost forgot, guys, but I wanted to finish saying the preseason for you. We finished 4 and 3 there. McCann had 11 points in 7 games. So. Hopefully this team can do well in the sim and we'll take on the Stanley Cup. All right, guys, we're at the deadline here with a record of 31, 28, and 2. So we're just above 500. And I think we're currently out of a playoff spot, but it's really close. Uh, yeah, we're 64 points. Tie with the Panthers, who have a game in hand. We're one behind the Sabres, who have 65. Two behind the Canadians, who have 66. Like, this division's crazy. The Red Wings are the only team that are out of it. The Metro, we'd actually be third, or at least tied for third, with the Devils. I don't know like, why our division is so crazy. It looks like we'd have an even tougher time in the West. The Pacific's also really close. And then the Central, I mean, we'd be tied with the Wild. We're last in our division. Stars, Blues, Bo 69 fighting for that final wild card spot. So yeah, it should be crazy, you know, last month and a half here. Crosby playing like Sid the Kid, 72 points, 61 games right now. Love to see that. This is insane, guys. Look at the trade that just went down. Eric Carlson and Patrick Marlowe head to Chicago. Sharks get back a first-round pick, Nicholas Bodwin, Ryan Stillman. Chicago now has $20 million going to Seth Jones and Eric Carlson. And I just realized they also have $20 million going to Tazing Kane. So half their salaries in four players. We'll see if it works out for them. All right, guys, this season is coming down to the wire. We currently have 85 points. We are three points out of a wildcard spot. Panthers Canadians there, both 88. Sabres 87. All four teams, two games left. And it looks like you're probably going to need 89 or more points to get in. We win our last two games, we get 89 points, we get in, but we're gonna have to hope, you know, Panthers Canadians never get more than an OT loss. I'm not sure if we have the tiebreaker, so let's see if we can see them out squeaking. I can't believe how close this is. Like, our first line's an all star line, and even then, it's like three of the best players in the NHL. Next two games here, we gotta win them both. I just realized we actually play the Sabres who were behind, so winning this first game is huge. See what happens. 4 2 win, okay, so our hopes are still alive. Uh, we're now tied with the Sabres. Panthers Canadians both got OT losses, I think. They have 88 points each. So if we can win the next game, they both lose. We're definitely in. Uh, if they both lose, we get an OT loss. Hopefully, can at least win one of the tiebreakers. Obviously, Sabres still have to lose because they could win get 89. Like, it is so tight there, these four teams battling for the last two spots. I see Columbus, though, has a negative record. So I feel like, you know, the odds would be we win. Final game here. It's down to the wire. Let's send it period by period. See if the boys can come through. First one. 2-1 lead, Doan and Ekman Larson, so two Coyotes, Jenner for uh, Columbus. 5-2, they're playing well. Upshaw, McKinnon, Crosby, Bemstrom for Columbus. Keep it going. 6-5, that's way too close. Upshaw again of all people, lining with a couple, Rensky with one. Columbus hates us for some reason, they almost uh, ruined our chances. I don't even know if we're going to be in. We won the two games we needed to though, now... You know, we'll see if fate lets us in. And we get the final spot, 89 points, 50 in the Atlantic, second wild card spot. We're actually tied with the Sabres. Canadians there finished with 88. Crosby finished with 101 points, so over 100 for Sid the Kid. Love seeing that. That was way too close. The fact Columbus almost pulled back in the third, like, are you kidding me? So 
I'll take a look at how everyone did this season, of course, and then we'll see how we did in the standing. So, Crosby 101, McKinnon 100. So, 100 points for the two sandbaggers from Cole Harbor. Love seeing that. Surprisingly, Crosby was a minus 10. So, he had, what, 46 power play points, which means he was still out there for, what, 50-something goals against. That's crazy. Even McKinnon minus 3. Math is at 86 there. Ronick 74. Whitney 55. 50 plus points for Ryan Whitney. We'll see if Sake can get him paid, because I think, yeah, he's only making 3.1 million, which I guess. It wasn't too bad for Ryan Whitney. Hayes there, almost 50 points at 48. Yandel, 47, also pushing 50. Jimmy Hayes there at 35. Four game winners. I love seeing that. Uh, Tyson Berry, also 35. Ekman Larson, 30. Upshaw, 30. His third liner's not too bad. Purcell at 17, pitching in. Uh, Ryan Malone, 8. <laughs> Bissonnet, lowest score on the team with 6 points. 145 penalty minutes would not be outdone by Ryan Reeves at 93. I'm guessing Reeves had less ice time. Yeah, Reeves only had seven minutes of ice time, whereas Biznasty almost had 11. So basically, it was on the ice more, which gave him more opportunity to get into fights, get penalties. 145 pens. We'll see how that ranks the entire NHL. He might have led the entire league, so that's pretty cool to see. Um, take a look at goalies next here. Flurry, 30 wins, 0.895, below 0.9 for Flurry at 3.3. The King here, 0.906 to 2.87. That's not too bad at all. I guess we should probably look at like, you know, Whitney and Biznasty, their entire stat there. So Whitney was pretty much all assists, which we expect. Minus four, 16 pims. Um, let's see. He had no game winners, 13 power play points. 23 minutes of time on ice. Whitney was out there quite a bit. Uh, never took a face off. 81 hits, 115 blocks, 50 giveaways, 45 takeaways. No fights. Let's actually, yeah, take a look at uh, Biznasty's fights. <laughs> 22 fights for the guy. Reeves there at 13. Um, 46% on the face-off circle, so we actually took, you know, a decent amount there. Again, almost 11 minutes time on ice, so pretty happy with how those guys played. I'll take a look now at the entire NHL. I feel like Crosby and McKinnon should be pretty high up there. McDavid 108, same with Brain Point, what a year for him. Kucherov, Sagan, Bergeron, Barkov, there's our Crosby, Svech, our McKinnon, so not too bad at all. They're both on the first page. In terms of goals, McDavid 56, Kuch behind him, surprised. Usually Ovechkin gets it, but McDavid's a beast. And actually Crosby on the Penguins there was fourth in goals with 52. Now penalty minutes. Biznasty, I think, has a chance here. He does get it, 145. He actually has 50 more penalty minutes than the next guy in Burrowicki on the Canucks. Reeves there was third. So, yeah, we uh, <laughs> maybe that was why we, like, we just barely made the playoffs because our team was on the PK quite a bit. And uh, Biznasty there was to thank for that one. We'll take a look next at the defense. I feel like we probably didn't have any of the top defensive scorers. Yeah, Carlson, 91. That's insane. But I still, I mean, Whitney there, 55. Isn't too bad at all for him. Rookie skaters. Do any of our guys count as rookie skaters? I don't think so. Yeah, so uh, Lafreniere, 75, actually. Pretty crazy here for him. Outscoring Kaprizov. I'll take a look next here, guys, at the team standings. Entire league there. Colorado wins at 113 points. So that's pretty true to real life. Tampa Bay second. Toronto third. I think those three teams at the top make sense. Edmonton may be a little high there at 104. Now, these playoffs are probably going to be weird because look at some of the other divisions. So, we finished 13th in the league. We just barely squeak in the playoffs. Buffalo is 15th. St. Louis 89 misses. Same with Vegas. Montreal 88. Pittsburgh at 20 with 86 gets in. Wow, I'd be pissed if I was some of those teams. Last place, Detroit 65. Let's see, goals four here. Wow, we weren't really that high. Our first line, plus three, Matthews, Crosby, McKinnon, I thought should have done a lot better than it actually did. Wow, we didn't really score much at all. Goals against. Um, we weren't that high, though. So it looks like we were just kind of pretty average for everything. Now, power play goals, 69. <laughs> nice. I was going to say, our power play, Matthews, Crosby, McKinnon, Yandel, Whitney. They're going to sonk it around the ice. Three all-stars. Again, a plus five. And we did have the best power play in the league. 69 power play goals. I was going to say... Um, 29.4 percentage there. And our penalty kill percentage was 80%, which isn't actually that bad. I thought maybe we had a bad PK, but looks like we are probably just in the penalty box too much, honestly. As, yeah, time shorthanded there, 245 minutes. Vancouver, though, almost 300. I don't know what they were doing. So, I don't know. I guess, you know, there's other good teams. Even though this team was only 87 overall, after seeing our chemistry boost, I really thought they'd be, like, a sure thing for the playoffs. The fact came down to literally the last game really surprised me. So, Let's see here, guys, in the playoffs. I think we're playing Tampa in the first round. And yeah, we got Tampa Bay Lightning. So <laughs> um, we got the back-to-back -back Sunday Cup winners. This is definitely a test here for the Spin Chicklets team. Let's see how we do. First two games are in Tampa. And we get a 6-5 OT loss, but a 6-5 win to follow it up. Okay, so not bad. Heading home here, next two games. 
4-3 loss. We're down 2-1 to one and a 5-2 win. So we're playing them pretty well here. 2-2. Two, two. Again, we have some stars on this team. The role players aren't that bad. 4-3 loss. That's tough. Have to win the next two games. We'll do this one period by period again. This is our last, you know, final effort here. 1-1. One, one, Matthews Coleman. 2-1. We have to have a hero here. Let's just send the period. Wow. 4-1. Yanni Gore with a couple. The guy's supposed to be on Seattle. Unfair. So... We squeak into the playoffs. Unfortunately, we run up against the back-to-back -back cup winners. We lose to them in six. That's tough. And look at this, guys. A lot of results are in. Philadelphia picking first overall. You don't really see them picking that high. Detroit doesn't win a single lottery. That's unfortunate. Colorado Avalanche there win the Stanley Cup. I was thinking it was going to be them, Tampa, or Toronto. McKinnon was almost two points per game in the playoffs. I feel bad for him. He did everything he possibly could, and the rest of the team let him down. Crosby had 10, so... Again, the two sandbaggers from Cole Harbor, they were trying. Matthews at eight, Dome there. Whitney had five assists. Um, Jimmy Hayes, a couple goals for us. Where's his brother, though? Kevin Hayes, one assist. Ryan Reeves there didn't have a single point. But that's not really his job on the team, so we can't put it on him. Goaltending wise, Flurry, 0.884 and a 4.06. I had Flurry as a 90 overall to start the season. He's down to an 87 now. I'm not sure why he played so bad for us. It makes no sense to me. So, take a look at the playoff tree here. Of course, we lose to Tampa. They beat the Leafs. They lose to the Panthers, who play the Avalanche, who, of course, beat them. Avalanche there beat the Stars in five. Swept the uh, Blackhawks, who, of course, had Carlson on D with Jones. 40 million to four guys. Didn't I mean, I guess it kind of worked out. They're in the second round. They then beat the Oilers there in seven. McKinnon versus McDavid, conference final. That would be so amazing to watch. And then they beat the Panthers there in six. The awards here, of course, Colorado Stanley Cup and the President's Trophy. So, big year for them. Francis Campbell as well. Individual, McDavid, Dart Ross there. Kucherov, though, got the Hart Trophy, which makes no sense. Brain Point was also, like, third in scoring. McDavid had no help. McDavid should have got the Hart. Uh, John Carlson, James Norris, Kucherov, Lady Bing, Lafreniere, Calder, McKinnon, Con Smythe. Of course, Carlos McKinnon, not ours. But good to see that, because our McKinnon played well, deserves something. Uh, Vasilevsky, Vesna, wow, Tampa Bay also got the Liam Jennings Trophy. Lindgren got the Bill Masterson. I was hoping maybe Shane O'Brien on our team could have won that. Uh, Calgary Flames coach, Jack Adams. O'Reilly, Selkie. Kucherov, Ted Lindsay, McDavid, Marisha Shard. Wow. So, unfortunately, we took home no hardware this year. But still, I thought it was a really fun sim. Seeing, like, the spit and shake the team play together. is nasty. Lead the entire league in PIMS. Uh, I thought it was a fun year. Both Crosby and McKinnon put up 100 points. I feel like, it, you know, it probably wasn't that far off how this team would have done. It would have been a fun team. It was nasty being in the box too much. McKinnon and Crosby would have been, you know, putting up a ton of points for us. And we would have made the playoffs, but lost to a better, more well-rounded team. So, our bottom six definitely was lacking a little bit but like i said guys i thought that was a fun video i hope you enjoyed it if you did leave a thumbs up if you guys have not subscribed yet hit the sub button as always guys thanks so much for watching have a nice day goodbye